so I was at a local uh, ham swap fest, uh, and this little thing caught my eye. This little Libretto 50 CT. So let's open it up, check out what it is. It's a laptop. It's one of those, you know, palm size uh, little computers. Now this thing was made in the late 90s, probably like 98 or something like that. So, you know, you expect when I turn this on that it's, you know, a Windows CE device, because those were all the rage. But, uh, if you turn this thing on, let it resume from sleep. Bang! Windows 95. Alright, so let's look at the features of this thing. Uh, as you saw, it has pretty good power management utilities. You know, it can do full uh, suspend to RAM, suspend to disk. So, pretty good there. It can do uh, display brightness, uh, it can do disk power down, it can do various bits of hardware power down, so it's pretty good, especially for the time. The display itself, uh, it's a bit dim. It's hard to see outside, or uh, if you're near a window. That could just be because the uh, CCFLs that provide the backlight are getting a bit old, so I'm not going to fault it too much there. Uh, but the screen looks pretty good in other respects. Uh, the keyboard is, you know, pretty nice uh, tactile one. Uh, it feels a little bit spongy, but, you know, for a keyboard this size, it's very usable. The mouse is what I really like about this thing. It's not a trackpad or one of those things on the keyboard, it's up here. And, you know, this is just a regular trackpad, you know, you can move the mouse around, where is it? There it is. So you move that around with this. But, uh, on the back here, you've got these two buttons. So, you know, you hold your computer like this, and, you know, you click around with the buttons on the back. So it's very usable. Even if it's sitting on a desk and you're typing with one hand, you can still very easily uh, operate the mouse. So that's, that's fantastic. Uh, as for the processor itself, it is a Pentium. It's a, a 120 megahertz part, but they underclocked it to 75 megahertz. Uh, so presumably that's for battery life or heat dissipation or something. But I've read guides on how to, you know, technically overclock this thing back to its the processor's spec, which I might do. Uh, the RAM inside, well, it's only got 16 megabytes. It's upgradable, at least in theory, to 32, but uh, I'll have to open this thing up and see what it would take, because I'm, I'm not really um, willing to spend too much money trying to find things. But as you can see, you know, it works pretty well, I guess. And that's the problem. Whoever used this thing had most of their stuff on an external drive, presumably inside this PCMCIA slot here, which is a PCM, PCMCIA version 2, so it's pretty quick. So <laughs> various useful things like, you know, iExplorer are just flat out not there, or, you know, Hyper Terminal, which I was hoping to use to get stuff onto this from, you know, external computers. If you go into communications here, or sorry, if you go to Hyper Terminal, it's like, oh, I can't find it. So that could be problematic. I might have to figure something out. I'm probably going to actually take the drive out of this thing and image it in case, I, you know, the hard disk dies so I have something useful to go back to because, you know, this thing has lots of utilities, you know, the backlight utility and, and the PC card utility that would be uh, difficult to get. On the back we've got a headphone jack. Unfortunately this is the small kind so you can't plug in normal headphones to it. You have to use an adapter. Kind of a pain. I might see if I can replace it with something. But that's that. Here you've got your classic 90's uh, IRDA connector here. Or not connector, transmitter and receiver. Uh, <laughs> when's the last time you ever had something with IR capabilities? But anyways, nothing over here. On the bottom, you've got your expansion dock port. Here's the expansion dock. It's pretty useful. It's got you know your serial out. Uh, you've got your VGA. It can only drive 1024 by 768, so it's not great, but it'll definitely do the job. And your printer connection. Now, apparently, the connector actually brings out uh, mouse and keyboard for PS2. So you can actually hack into this pretty easily 
Hero and PS2 connector so you can use an external mouse. I'm made in Japan. So anyways, this thing looks pretty easy to take apart. Just a bunch of regular uh, Phillips screws. Looks like someone's already gotten into it. Uh, so let's take this thing apart and see what makes this thing tick. I want to make an image of that hard disk. I was able to find a service manual for this thing. Awesome. All the pinouts for everything. Check it out. Well, this might become my favorite hacking computer. Well, this is funny. It calls the Pentium a 64-bit microprocessor. Uh, sort of. Keep dreaming. Well, that's nice of them. They used all the same type of screw. I like it when laptop manufacturers do that. But anyways, you take off these two screws at the end and it looks like the hard disk just pops out. Alright, a couple screws and this thing is out. Looks like that's the uh, external RAM connector. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure why they have these little straps in here. They're not actually electrical connections, they're just straps. Not sure. <laughs> Such a cute laptop keyboard. <laughs> it is so tiny! Alright, we disconnect one of these connectors and we're through. And we've separated the two halves of the case. Uh, just quick little fly over here, so here's the power jack, this is the back of the computer, uh, here's where the connector plugs in, this is your sound. Not much visible right now, but uh, if we look over here, this device here with the uh, code on top of it is actually a microcontroller. Uh, it's a PD78P014. Uh, it has something like 32K of one-time programmable ROM, uh, 1K of RAM, and you know various other bits and pieces. Uh, it runs at maybe like 10 megahertz or something like that. I would guess this thing is running all the power management things, uh, and like the suspend to RAM and suspend to disk and things like that. It might be handling functions of that. Uh, over here we just have a uh, quad uh, switch um, down here. What is this? This is, an, uh, this is a line driver down here. So, nothing very interesting. I would presume that this is the graphics chip. Um, I'll have to take this off to confirm. Uh, but under here, presumably, there's the CPU, judging by the uh, heat discoloration on here. Uh, here's your CMOS battery. It hasn't leaked, as far as I can tell. So that's good. Uh, so let's peel this back and uh, see what else we can find. Oh yes, there's definitely a lot more magic happening under there. So let's start from the left, shall we? This is the classic Yamaha OPL uh, multimedia controller, so this will be like the sound card. Uh, working our way over here, I'm not sure what this thing is. I couldn't find any documentation, but uh, there's the numbers. There's the numbers. But, uh, okay, so if we work our way on over here, this is a uh, single channel audio amplifier. Presumably that's for the microphone. I can't find a microphone on here, but I guess you could do microphone input. Uh, this is a dual channel headphone driver. So, you know, headphone out. Uh, this is just an op amp. Now, these are obviously the RAM, and I think it's kind of funny that they're using a chip uh, on top of a little riser board because the chip doesn't match the footprint so I guess they couldn't find any more of a particular kind of RAM in a particular package they were using so they just stuck them on the, these little risers and that's, I guess it works just fine. Uh, this thing I couldn't find an exact part match but from looking around this looks to be a 2 megabit uh, flash so uh, I think this is going to be for the uh, BIOS so I read in the manual that you can actually flash the BIOS on this thing. So that's what that is. Let's take this thing off and see what's under here. Well, I kind of decided to actually take the board out first. Uh, <laughs> how's that for a tiny computer board? But anyway, so here's the hard disk. It's an HD2116 uh, uh, from Toshiba, of course. Uh, have to take that off. There's a hair. Here's the PC card ejection mechanism. Uh, you know, just normal stuff. The DC DC converters, you know, bits and bobs. Those will probably be MOSFETs under there. Um, that'll probably be some sort of comparator or something like that, uh, op amp. Not entirely sure. 
but uh, that's pretty standard stuff. Actually, my bad, I wasn't thinking just right. So uh, that chip down there is actually a synchronous PWM uh, converter. So it's a one-chip solution that drives all this stuff. Underneath the uh, PC card, little black tape thing, <laughs> there's an absolutely massive BGA package here. Uh, this will be the uh, Toshiba uh, specific chip that kind of integrates all the other components of the computer. So, you know, all the various buses, you know, PS2 stuff, memory interface, all that good stuff is taken care of by this chip. And I guess there's a bit more RAM here maybe to support the operation of this thing. I'm not too sure. Alright, so under that heatsink assembly, we've got the main processor. Looks pretty cool. It's all soldered in along the edge here. You've got, uh, this This is the graphics chip, it's an LCD driver T65550. Uh, um, over here we've got a bunch of power stuff. Uh, you've got a bunch of MOSFETs here, some more MOSFETs here. Interestingly, this is a sensor amp. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but uh, maybe they just need extra precision uh, in their power management stuff. Uh, but not much else of note. Apart from this uh, Max 785CAI, which I can't find any information on, uh, I guess this would be some sort of power management system. Um, looking at the related uh, chips, it's uh, all related to PCMCIA, so maybe that's a PCMCIA controller. This lot is over here, so it's pretty close. Well, I'm making the disk image, and uh, <laughs> If your USB device can't supply power, maybe this one can. This thing's drawing about, oh, I don't know, 7 milliamps, no, sorry, 700 milliamps more than a USB can supply. So, there you go, power supply to the rescue. So, the device has been backed up. Um, I've also gone ahead and copied hyper terminal on here so that I can do serial transfers uh, up until I get the USB working. Uh, I might just install uh, whatever that program is that overpowers DOS and runs Linux. I might do that. And, uh, or I might just make an image of, or copy an image of this onto a bigger hard drive and dual boot uh, Linux and then Windows. So, yeah, I'll figure something out. Now we get to play, will it still work? Yep, it's working. Screens just be really dark as usual. Keyboard? Yep. I assume the mouse works as well, given it's the same connector as this thing. All right, so let's have a look at what's on this thing. Uh, we have to be, of course, kind of careful because th this thing is obviously chock full of personal information and it's never a good idea to go um, looking through that. But uh, we can at least look at what software is installed. Um, I don't know if uh, you all remember the Timex data link uh, watches. Here's the utility to transfer uh, your stuff to your watch. Unfortunately, whenever I run this thing, it, uh, it crashes spectacularly. So I think we're going to have to leave that one alone. Um, over here, we have a um, software called TranExit. I'm not sure how to say that, but that's what it is over here. And uh, I'd launch that, but it takes, it locks up the computer for like a minute and then it, it continues. But what it is, is basically a uh, direct cable connection transfer software. So I guess I didn't really need HyperTerminal. But um, I don't really want to think about how to get this to work on my Linux uh, main box. So it's all for the best. As you can see, this little icon over here is Hyper Terminal that I copied over earlier. Uh, let's see. Over here, this is just the user's guide. You can launch that. Then it tells you pretty much what you'd expect. Ah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. This thing has the slowest rendering imaginable. Come on. Come on. Grind, grind, grind. Yep, there we go. Alright. 
that's the user manual. Yes, I'm certain I want to exit. Uh, here we've got Palm Desktop. Uh, you know, presumably the guy had a Palm Pilot. Uh, this is nice, it's Photo Studio. So, you know, ArcSoft. Oops, I closed it accidentally. Still getting used to that mouse. And there we go, we can, uh, we can draw. Oh uh, man, these are pretty terrible colors. But, uh, oops. There we go. Some painting. That's pretty useful. It's pretty quick too, considering what it's running on. Uh, here we got Outlook Express. And that pretty much sums it up with the stuff on the desktop. Um, if we look over here in the programs, We've got the usual accessories, we've got the Avant Go uh, synchronization software. I don't know if it was ever used, it might even have come with this. Uh, so we've got, yeah, Photo Studio, we've got, you know, Handspring, uh, Palm Desktop stuff here, Iron Man, blah blah blah. Uh, I don't know what this is, this snappy thing, I'm going to try running it. Oh, it's on the external disk. Yeah, apparently this guy had an external disk hooked up to this thing and uh, apparently has all the programs. Alright, Toshiba accessories, whatever, registration. Ooh, the Yamaha station. Does this mean I can, like, play stuff on it? Ah, of course. What does this thing have on it? Almost nothing then. Try Word. Uh, oh. Well, it didn't really work. It's funny, my uh, Mac 512K boots up and then launches its text editor faster than this thing boots and, well, boots at all. Yeah, okay, Office is broken. Let's see. Internet Explorer? Not even Internet Explorer works. This guy copied everything to the external drive. Whoop. Well, that wasn't very exciting, but anyways, that's what's on here. I see uh, things like address book and things like that. We should leave those alone. Alright, let's try installing Hyperterminal. Are you ready for the nostalgia? Oh yeah, remember those backgrounds? Woohoo! Alright. Sure. Sure. We're on the World Wide Web. Hillgrave.com. I think they're still around. Wow. Now that's something I didn't realize existed. That what that says is it says Fed World Government BBS. That is interesting. I should try calling that number. Wow. Okay. Well, there it is, one one seven oh three three two one three 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 nine. We should try it. <laughs> I don't actually have any single modem in my entire house, so I'll have to try it another day, I guess. Arg! Oh, uh, what's wrong? Uh, yes, I remember these days. It was the stupid Palm Pilot synchronization software, so killed that, now it works. Oh, that universal common denominator between PCs. The serial port. Fantastic. So, uh, yeah, I'll end this video here. I've rambled on long enough. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to keep messing with it. I think I'll try to get uh, Linux on this thing just for fun. Try to stick a ridiculously large hard disk in it. And uh, <laughs> see what kind of looks I get when I take this thing to, uh, uh, to Starbucks. You know, I could have my USB PC card over here, plug in my Wi-Fi dongle, and, you know, sort of, kind of surf.
at least enough to get in trouble. So anyways, thanks for watching.